This video is brought to you by my Twitter, at NameExplainYT. Give me a follow. Please guys, I, I need the validation. Our solar system contains eight planets. Yes, eight. It kills me to say that. Pluto, we still love you. These eight planets being Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Any fan of mythology will know these names, but for those unaware, just how did the planets get their names? So, minus two exceptions, all the planets are named after Roman gods, which were based on ancient Greek gods. They are named after Roman gods because it was the Romans who named many of the planets in the first place, at least the ones visible to the human eye. And as time went on and new planets were discovered after the fall of the Roman Empire, astronomers just carried on with that tradition. Yet of course, that opens the bigger question as to why the Romans chose gods out of anything to name the planets after. Well, like current day astronomers, the Romans were simply following tradition too. Civilizations even in ancient Mesopotamia used the names of their gods to name the planets. This comes from astrological divination, where Mesopotamian priests would use the movement of the stars and planets for fortune telling, coming to link certain planets with certain gods and what their position in the sky meant for the people whose fortunes they were telling. Let's start with the planet closest to the sun, Mercury. Being so close to the sun means that Mercury gets hot, being able to reach temperatures of 450 degrees Celsius. Yet Mercury doesn't have much of an atmosphere, so when nighttime arrives, the temperatures plummet well below freezing. And if that wasn't bad enough, the lack of an atmosphere on Mercury has led to the planet being littered with asteroid craters. But despite these drawbacks, the planet has something over all the other planets. Being the closest to the sun means that it is also the planet that circles the sun the quickest, taking just 88 days to orbit the sun. The speed of Mercury led the Romans to name it after their god of messages and communications Mercury, his Greek equivalent being Hermes, who was also believed to be the swiftest of all the gods. Despite being further away from the sun, Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system, reaching heat up to 465 degrees Celsius. This has led to Venus having an incredibly dense atmosphere, which traps heat in like an extreme version of the greenhouse effect that we have here on Earth. Its atmosphere is mainly carbon monoxide, with clouds of sulfuric acid. So, despite being pretty much the planet equivalent of hell, Venus was actually named after the Roman goddess of love and beauty Venus, whose Greek equivalent is Aphrodite, making Venus the only planet named after a goddess as opposed to a god. It would have been named after the beauty of Venus, as it was the planet that shined the brightest of the five known to the ancient astronomers. Then we have Earth. Earth is the only planet not named after a god or goddess, coming from the old English and German words Erde or Erdi meaning ground. It's the planet with the dullest name of them all, and we're the ones stuck on it. So why isn't Earth named after a god? Well, ancient astronomers named planets after gods, and they didn't really see Earth as a planet. To them, planets were these far off stars. Earth was just our place in the universe, with elements that made up our existence the water, the air, the fire, and of course, the earth below our feet. This is kind of the same thing that happened with the naming of our moon. Of course, when it was later realized that earth was just another planet like the others, the name earth had been solidified, as had the names of the other planets named after gods. However, another name that earth is known as is terra firma, this name comes from Latin meaning firm land, and in Roman mythology, terra slash tellus was the goddess of the earth. Seriously guys, why isn't this the official name of our planet to keep in line with everything else? Then we have Mars, the red planet. Mars is the planet that's closest to being habitable, like our Earth. Its naming is credited to its red colour. Thanks to this bloody red colour, the Greeks named it after their god of war, Ares, with the Romans following suit and naming it after their god of war, Mars. Even in other civilizations, Mars couldn't escape being named after its colour. Ancient Chinese astronomers dubbed it the Fire Star, and Egyptians named it the Big Red One. What's also interesting about the naming of Mars is the naming of Mars's moons. Mars's moons are called Phobos and Deimos. They were discovered by American astronomer Asphar Hall in 1877. He gave them these names as Phobos and Deimos are the names of Ares' children, the Greek equivalent of Mars. So the planet Mars together with its moon are like father and children, which is kinda cute. What however isn't cute is the naming of Jupiter and its moons. Known for its unique striped pattern, most famously its giant red spot, Jupiter is unfathomably huge. It's more than twice as massive as all the other planets put together and its volume could hold over 1300 Earths. It's the biggest known planet in our solar system and because of this it shares its name with the god of the sky and lightning and the king of all gods in Roman mythology, the god Jupiter, whose Greek equivalent is Zeus. 
Jupiter has many moons, yet its four most prominent moons are the Galilean moons discovered by Galileo in 1610, these being called Europa, Ganymede, Callisto and Io. Yep, it's called Io, not Lo. What kind of idiot would call it Lo? These moons are named after four of the many lovers of Zeus, Jupiter's Greek equivalent, meaning Jupiter and its moons are like a misogynist and his lovers, which isn't fun at all. When NASA launched a spacecraft to study Jupiter in 2011, they named it Juno, the name of Jupiter's wife, to go let Jupiter know that we all know what he's been up to in space. While Saturn misses out on being the biggest planet, hey, second biggest is still pretty good, it does have another iconic feature it can rely on. It's extraordinary rings made out of ice and rock. Saturn is named after the Roman god of agriculture, capital, liberation and time. His Greek version is Cronus, who was the leader of the Titans. Saturn has at least 62 moons, and many of these moons are named after Titans, giants and characters, from Greek, Inuit, Gaelic and even Norse mythology. And of course, Saturn's largest moon, just called Titan. Uranus was the first planet to be discovered, as all the other planets close to Earth could be seen with the human eye. Uranus is the special exception of the planet, firstly because it's the only one named after a Greek god not a Roman god, and secondly because there were so many names suggested before Uranus, including Hypochronius, Minerva, Herschel and the Georgium Sidus. However, German astronomer Johann Bode made the final decision with the name, naming the planet after the Greek god of the sky Uranus. What's even more unique about Uranus is that all its moons are named after characters from the works of William Shakespeare and Alexander Pope, such as the moons of Ariel, Cordelia and Juliet. Finally, we have Neptune, the planet furthest away from us, and it was a planet actually predicted to exist by mathematic equations before being actually discovered. Its vivid blue colour comes from its cloud cover, and this blue colour has always given the planet aquatic connotations. From being known as the ice giant planet to its actual naming of Neptune, the Roman god of the sea, whose Greek equivalent is of course Poseidon. Neptune's 14 moons are all named after lesser sea gods from Greek mythology, with the biggest of Neptune's moon being Triton, Triton being the name of the Greek god and messenger of the sea. So that's all the main planets, but what about poor old Pluto? From its discovery in 1930 until 2006, Pluto was considered the ninth planet, yet after being declassified in 2006 it is now considered the largest dwarf planet, so at least it's gone from the smallest planet to the largest dwarf planet. Despite its meek appearance, Pluto is the name of the ruler of the underworld in Roman mythology, with his Greek equivalent being Hades. So, while Pluto remains as a dwarf planet for now, in 2017 a group of scientists proposed a new definition for a planet, that being round objects in space smaller than stars. And as awesome as it would be to have Pluto as a planet again, that will make the amount of planets in our solar system go to around 100. And I'm not prepared to make a video explaining 100 planet names.